according to Cash and Transit Association of South Africa, 217 CIT robberies had occurred nationally between January and August. On Friday, four um, suspected cash in transit robbers have been killed in a shootout with police at a house in Guamashu in the north of Durban. They are believed to have been involved in a number of cash in transit heists in the area recently. Just yesterday, robbers cornered and blew up yet another cash in transit vehicle along the N12 near Deep Kloof, uh, Soweto. Now, let's discuss this. We're now joined uh, via teams by Henny Lochner. He's a former policeman, independent crime researcher, and author of uh, Transito, The Truth Behind the Big Money Robberies. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your time this afternoon. So just talking about, um, you know, as the spate of cash in transit heists that we are seeing, of course, there are concerns that, uh, you know, going into the festive season, uh, these will begin to start escalating. What are you reading into these latest cash in transit heists? Uh, good afternoon and to your viewers as well. Yeah, um, we must and we can rely on, on cash in transit stats, uh, uh, I, I think that the South African police service have lost the bet battle against cash and tran transit robberies. I think the stats speak for itself. But um, if if the story uh, if the story is true about the the four for the shot dead yesterday, my prediction is that uh, uh, it will. Uh, they will be, it will be quiet on the KwaZulu Natal front, but we must realize how Cash and Transit Group is formed. If we do not realize that, you will not be able to, to prevent Cash and Transit robberies. We must, we must understand that certain crimes can be prevented by uh, proactive and visible policing, but certain crimes cannot. It it relies on information and intelligence, and cash and transit robberies falls into that category. Unfortunately, um, they have I, they have lost the battle. Uh, yeah, what if you do understand how these people form? I think then you will be able to infiltrate and prevent these type of crimes. But unfortunately, they have lost the battle. Mm. Stat speaks for itself. Now, by that very assertion then, Mr. Lochner, and to answer my question of earlier, are we then likely to see more cash in transit heists going into the festive season, the busiest time of the year for South Africans? And how will the SAPS or other law enforcement agencies be able, able to handle that? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Taking into consideration what happened at Woodspray and now these four that's been shot dead, uh, they will, uh, it will uh, decrease, but it will pick up during the festival season. That is a, that is a fact. And the one in, in the one incident yesterday, uh, that's a clear indication uh, what they are going to do. They plan. We must realize these people plan. That's why they say they are uh, executing it in military precision. It's because they plan. There will definitely be a rise, but it all depends on crime intelligence. If they are doing their job and uh, arrest people, then, uh, then there will uh, be a decrease, but I doubt that. Mm. Uh, one of the concerns that was raised following uh, another latest, uh, you know, uh, cash and transit heist that occurred in Gauteng was the lack of not only police visibility, but just arriving on the scene when these cash and transits uh, occur. I mean, some witnesses who were on the scene 30 minutes later, no police van in sight. Concerns being raised that in these instances, there are police who are working with these robbers. Uh, in your crime research, uh, what are some of your uh, indications in terms of how true that is? That, that, that's a fact that, that, it, that is true. There will always be somebody from the criminal justice system involved in, the, in these planning. It is a pity to hear that 30 minutes after the, uh, the incident, the police uh, did not visit or 
But we must also realize that they have taken this, the, the reaction time into consideration when they plan these robberies. Yeah, and, and the people that's looting, that's stealing the money uh, on the crime scene, that was also taken into consideration. Sometimes they leave money on the scene for the, for the public to contaminate the crime scene. Uh, let's talk about, you know, just some of the trends that you have seen. Uh, you talk, of course, of uh, statistics that do not lie. They, of course, tell us where we are going in terms of the trajectory of uh, cash in transit heists. Uh, in as far as intelligence is concerned, what can police do better? Because uh, one of the indications is that, um, you know, when you talk about these kinds of robberies, they will always be in some form or other, you know, a bigger party at play uh, in as far as a kingpin is concerned? Okay, yeah. I'm, going, I'm coming back to my previous com comment. We must understand how a group is formed. Uh, this, uh, there, is, there is not a kingpin. The leader is being elected through or is, is appointed by the group during the planning stage. So there's actually no king and kingpin. They steal for themselves in, in a group format. They consider the money uh, uh, transported by the CIT people when they targeted or identified the vehicle as theirs. So uh, there's actually no, no kingpin. After a successful robbery, each and every one of that uh, specific robbery will go and look for a new target. Mm. And then the process will start again and they, it will never be the same group that uh, execute a, a robbery. They, it, it changes because of information. They do a thorough uh, 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 surveying and planning in cash and transit robberies. In, 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 late, in late terms, uh, they, they, uh, they use the crime intelligence uh, gathering process to the benefit for themselves. Mm. So if you use that, if the police use the crime intelligence gathering process, I think that they will be able to, to prevent this. But the, the first step in the crime intelligence gathering process is you must realize that there is a problem. And the second step is how you are going to address it. And how are they going to address it? It's, it's through intelligence and crime information. But it, it, there's a difference between intelligence and information. Let's, let's take the Woodstrike and Louis Trichard incidents. Shortly after the incident, incidents, there were photos uh, on the scene from the AK-7 that was recovered on the crime scene. Intelligence, good intelligence would tell us that those weapons were used at other crime scenes. So, they, yeah, they do not have crime intelligence or, or, and information. That, that, that is the long and the short of the story. Mm. You mentioned something very interesting earlier on, particularly when we were talking about the KZN incident in which four of the, the suspects were gunned down and, and were killed um, in Guamashu. Uh, of course, we know that year on year, Guazulu Natal recorded a 44% increase in cash in transit heists. So it is one of the hotspots together with the Eastern Cape. So in this likelihood and with the stats that we know at hand, uh, where are they likely to move to next? You mentioned that given this incident, it was a success for the police, um, you know, to have killed four of, of these suspects. Where will they then be targeting next? Is that part of the intel that the police would then have to have on hand? Because uh, you earlier said that they would lie low in KZN. They will lie low. They, they will lie low right, right over the country because... Uh, if, if the information uh, regarding the KwaZulu Natal is correct, by the, by the way, we cannot pin all, all the people that's been sh shot dead, we cannot label them as cash and transit robbers. But if that is true, and because of the Hoodstrike incident, they will lie low uh, in, in South Africa, because they will go, and be, will go back to the drawing board because you learn more from mistakes as from success. So they will go back and replan, revisit, rethinking. So it will be uh, in South Africa, but there will be a decrease uh, 
in, in Natal and in certain parts of uh, Limpopo. That's the, and they are not geographically bound. Because remember, the, the AK-47 is not for hire. It is the person with the AK-47 that is being hired. Mm. So when they, when they plan, they, they take that into consideration. Who are we going to use? Who can we trust? 